Hi there, this is uh, Peter Rosenthal from uh, lovethatwine.co.uk. I'm here with the wine sleuth also from lovethatwine.co.uk. That's right. uh, and uh, we're comparing notes because we've just been to uh, a tasting of New Zealand wines um, at Lord's Cricket Ground and it's been a very busy Love That Wine day, hasn't it, Denise? It, it has been extremely busy. It was yeah. mad. It's crazy over yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we um, we decided to uh, to compare notes and, and one of the things we were looking at was uh, not uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Yes, for a change. For a change, because we wanted to kind of show that uh, actually New Zealand is not all about Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc and they, they can do different things as well and use different grape varieties. Mm -hmm. So um, we were just having a discussion about Riesling uh, and whether Riesling actually works in New Zealand. Um, and uh, I think we're probably coming at this from slightly different angles. Because, Possibly, yeah. Yes. <laughs> because what was your impression, uh, Denise? Well, I thought that the wines for me were just far too much, um, too sweet, too much residual mm. sugar. They weren't balanced enough. I found on the finish, a lot of them were quite cloying, like yeah. they really kind of stuck to the back of my, my mouth, you know yeah. what I mean? And I come to associate New Zealand uh, Riesling as being a much leaner in style. And for me, it seems that these wines were trying to be German. Okay. Um, okay. That's a fair point, actually. Yeah. 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 But it, it, interestingly, actually, the way I was coming from it is that some of the more Germanic styled wines were actually my favorites. So I, I didn't really go for the really high alcohol wines. I love mm -hmm. them in a slightly sweeter style mm -hmm. and slightly more of the, like the, the German styles. Uh, and what it actually shows is that they can do both. They can yeah. uh, provide you know, customers with, uh, with, or wine lovers with both styles of, uh, of Riesling, which is interesting to see. Uh, yeah, I think so, definitely. Um, some of the, as you said, some of the more Germanic styles, I prefer old world uh, yeah. you know, German uh, Rieslings. Yeah. Uh, and I found that some of them were very good um, examples of kind of like a new world version, I suppose. Okay. So not as fruit forward, but yeah. still fruit. I think German Riesling has a, little, has a lot of ripe fruit. And here the fruit was not as ripe. Okay. Um, but still had, and the acidity was not as high, which I would usually when you know, I'm drinking German Rieslings, you just have this really racy searing just, acidity. Yes, yes. searing acidity. Yeah. And yeah. I thought that these wines kind of lacked. They well, they did. They lacked that acidity. That yeah. there's a sort of like pow at the end that you get with a really yeah. good German Riesling. So you kind of lack. They're lacking a little bit in the balance. Yeah. And perhaps we also need to be fair on like some of these winemakers. You know, they were giving they were given grapes basically to make Riesling out of, but they're not necessarily Riesling winemakers. So yeah, they're yeah. Obviously, it's their interpretation of what they uh, what they're doing with the grape variety. Yeah. No. I, and I thought it was really interesting. Yeah. Uh, just seeing how. With the same grapes from the same place, same everything, yeah. the, the variety of styles uh, and the winemakers and how they interpreted the Riesling, uh, you know, what they could do with it was, was really interesting. And, and I really wonder if anybody else, anyone else in the world has ever done this sort of experiment. Yeah. Because, you know, even though maybe I didn't really care for the wines or, you know, whatever, it's still really interesting exercise. Yeah, it's great fun to do it. And I think, you know, more countries should do it. There's also yeah. a sense of people collaborating in a sense to do something, you know, which is completely different. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's ultimately what the wine world is about. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what else they can do. You yeah. know, I mean, because, you know, as, as we were saying, this is just from one particular region. And, you know, New Zealand has so many regions that people don't even yeah. know they're still planting. Yeah. So I think that there's a great future for Riesling. Yeah. Any anything New else Zealand. that you think is a bit of a, um, a tip or a one to watch? Uh, a Gruner Outliner. Mm. Did you try the Gruners? Uh, I did. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think those are very very interesting yeah. as well, and some of them are coming out uh, very well, very good, good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely think uh, the Gruner uh, is something for the future, and Pinot Gris. Did you try any Pinot Great. I, I've used I use a lot of Pinot Gris actually in uh, in wine tastings and mm. workshops from New Zealand, particularly because I think it's a very different style from the Pinot Grigio that people are yeah. used to. Oh, it's it's miles better. Um, yeah. And <laughs> <you can. laughs> <Whoa. laughs> let me just tell you right now, it's much much better, and and it doesn't really cost that much no. more. You know, no. maybe two pounds more, three pounds, but it's infinitely worth it. Believe me, it's good. it's definitely good. The thing to buy. <laughs> Fantastic. Great. All right. Well, thanks well, a lot, Peter. Thank you very much. Yes, and we'll be watching New Zealand Riesling. We, uh, we're going to be watching it <laughs> with a BDI, as they used to say. <laughs> exactly. Excellent. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.